<laughs> it makes this bike so mad. Okay, ABS traction control. Are they worth it? Should you actively look for them in your next bike purchase? And what do they look like when they activate on the bike? Now, I'm not going to be able to spend too much time in this intro um, because my GoPro camera is going to overheat again and I'm going to launch it straight into the ground. And that's also good because I'm getting a little wordy here. So in essence, ABS prevents the wheels from locking up. You do not want your wheels to lock up ever as you're riding on the street. The big extra benefit that ABS does is it allows you to still control your bike as you are slow decelerating at an extreme rate of speed. I'll get out and show that here in a second. ABS pumps the brakes for you so it keeps the wheel spinning as you decelerate. It prevents the bike from going head over or from locking the rear and fishtailing. That's it in essence. Now traction control. What does traction control do? There's two types. There is Proactive and there's reactive. Proactive traction control means that you have put an input on the bike that the bike believes is going to break traction. It will prevent that input from happening. Reactive, and this is the preferred system from most, is it will allow the bike to slip a certain degree and once it's slipped too much or the timing is wrong for a long enough period, it will then cut the power to that rear wheel. It will then try to stabilize okay and fortunately i have a on my jixer i have in two and one here the most proactive garbage traction control this planet has ever seen when it's maxed up to level 10 and then down through levels one three four um it has one of the best traction control systems of any bike uh i'll put it up against ducati and aprilia it's just a little less fine tuning um but i i this is one of my favorite traction controls i've been able to i've had uh and i've been able to experience and this is a both of these are actually big gaps in bike reviews in terms of what people talk about because you never hear anyone talk about how smooth is the abs um how aggressive is the traction control how proactive how reactive now let me get going before we overheat again because i swear to you this camera will go straight into the ground now i have traction control set up to level 10 on my bike i'm going to try and show that first just because i think that will be uh, a little more entertaining to see and again level 10 on this bike it ranges from 1 through 10. traction control prevents more power to the wheel should traction be broken should there be a differential in the front wheel speed and the rear wheel speed that's all it is it's very simple all right i wish i was joking but this piece of garbage actually just overheated as we were rolling um never buy a gopro zero out of ten short the company oh my god this is the most garbage piece of equipment i've ever owned in my entire life so let me get going and try and cool this down while i keep talking now now if i hear this thing beep again all right abs traction control to i don't even know where it died back there i just noticed that it, i heard some beep in there and it really made me mad so lean angle sensors are also added into traction control and this is a huge 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 bonus for traction control systems and what lean angle sensors do lean angle traction lean angle sensitive traction control and every bike manufacturer has a different uh way about calling that name for it um but what it does is the farther the bike is leaned the more aggressive the traction control becomes the more proactive it becomes and it also and it does a very good job of this and this is one of the things that the aprilia ducati and suzuki do better than any of them in my opinion is the farther you're leaned the less sensitive the throttle is and it is a very 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 cool useful feature and it makes it where you when you are aggressively leaning you get a little more flexibility on your throttle right so if i am going straight you know you're looking at the the white line it doesn't take much to get a big jump in power when i'm leaned if i'm at the you know i on this bike i feel it about 30 probably 35 40 degrees that throttle becomes much less sensitive and it's kind of a very cool and useful feature so when you're coming out of turns when you're keeping and you're rolling on that throttle again you're also removing that lean angle sensor and it gets it to where it's kind of a double boost uh, and it works very well it, it feels very very good aprilia's is all i'd say aprilia's is better 
Uh, but same deal. It's and I think that's one of the reasons why when people talk about going on test riding like an RSV4 and the Twonos and stuff, it's one of the reasons why it gets such raving reviews on its cornering ability and whatnot is because of that right there. Now, uh, that's my opinion. Take that for what it is. But to show you traction control, okay, we're in the back. And I'm going to show you my this bike. There's going to be a light that comes up every time traction control would come on, or when it's activated. And any time my bike thinks that that rear traction is being broken, okay. If we accelerate hard, it's cutting down the acceleration. Okay. So same thing. Cut it off. You can hear it kind of boop 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 like that. Okay. And same thing. If I come here and I start adding lean. Add lean, add throttle. Add lean, add throttle. Please don't do this. This is demonstration purposes only. This is a very dangerous activity. Um, but just notice how much that traction control is coming on. When I'm leaned, when I add throttle, I mean, that light is probably staying on. I can't really look at it. I'm just having to kind of take my own word for it here. Um, but traction control, traction control, traction control, right? What that's doing is it's preventing me from breaking traction on that rear wheel. Why do you want to prevent breaking traction from your rear, rear wheel? Aside from the obvious. And the reason breaking traction on your rear wheel is so dangerous on roads, on corners, on anything, is breaking, despite what common sense may lead you to believe, breaking traction on your rear is what's going to cause a high side. Okay? That's what's going to cause the whoop. And what happens is, it takes a little bit of distance. If you break your traction on your rear, and let's say you slide three, four inches, the bike is now sliding this way, and you have no traction on that rear wheel, right? The speed of that wheel is still going. So it's just driving it to nothing. And it's sliding, and it's getting a farther and farther away position. The handlebars are getting more and more bent, for lack of a better word, right? And what happens is when that, if that rear wheel catches, it catches traction again, which it very likely will, given street speeds, it's going to catch, and due to the geometry of the bike, right, so our handlebars are pointed that way still, and the tail of the bike is pointed this way. It's going to fling me over very aggressively, whoops, very aggressively over the bars. That is why braking traction is such a very dangerous thing to have happen on uh, the rear, especially in turns. And I'm kind of curious to go back and see, because I can still feel this horrible system activating, even just hitting these little baby turns back here. Um, it's, it's, it's a really, really aggressive traction control system. Um, but hopefully that shows you as well how aggressive, how quickly it's activating, how useful that could be, and especially the newer you are, how much that may prevent an uh-oh on your, your side, right? because it is very, very, very easy, and especially the more powerful the bike is, especially the less experience you have on powerful bikes, the more aggressive you are, more risk you have of an aggressive bike, an aggressive throttle input, so on and so forth. I have no idea where I am right now. Um, I've never actually gone down this road, so this is kinda, we're all learning things here. Now, I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna show you ABS. Um, ABS is going to be a little harder to show. I'm going to do my best and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to describe it as it goes off. And when I tried filming this before and my GoPro overheated because it's a garbage short the stock, uh, it is going to kind of, you'll see the mirrors rattle. Okay? So I'm going to do it with the front brake first. So I'm going to go up to speed. Uh, excuse me. My uh, finger got stuck there. Bad hand position. Don't do that. So I'm going to go up and then I'm going to brake hard and it's going to be ABS, ABS, ABS. Okay? Notice? Can you see those mirrors shaking? I'm going to go around this corner. And we got the other corner. Come through here. All right, same thing. ABS, 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 ABS. You can see it pumping. And this one, I was talking about the bike reviews earlier. ABS is very, it varies massively on how much you feel it on the bike. BMW has one of the most aggressive ABS systems. When ABS goes off on a BMW, you, your neighbors, and probably people, you know, within a 300 yard distance are aware that ABS is going off on your bike because you're out there. 
it's really aggressive on this bike the front is a very 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 smooth uh, ABS so again if you notice it's pump pumping I'm just going straight to just dumping it right and then the other thing is on the rear now this one that's where this bike loses a lot of points the rear on this bike is one of the worst ABS systems you'll ever find uh, and if I come up here right we're gonna pull in our clutch and you're gonna notice pump 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 my foot's dancing I mean just dancing back here again please don't do any of these things that I'm showing right here uh, these are not practice these aren't to go learn how your systems work these are just demonstration um, but again so I'm gonna do it again and I'm gonna use both brakes and I'm also gonna try and turn at the same time so I'm gonna go to just full 100% brake power and also try to turn okay well, that was a bumpy little patch right there goodness um, okay so same thing right we go straight we go straight I'm gonna pull and I'm gonna go and see I can still turn not well and it doesn't feel good, but I still have a little control. So let's say I'm going 50 and something pops up, okay? I can turn. I can get out of the way of that. Not well, but I can still move. That still buys me, I mean, what is that, five, six feet? So again, turn, 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 turn. ABS is pumping that whole time. I have control over that. I promise you, I would not be able to do that if I was progressively braking at the same time and stop at that same speed. If I practiced it for hours and hours and hours and hours, sure, it's not going to happen. It's it's just not going to happen. So, uh, I'll come up here. We'll do a little bit more of the traction control thing just because it makes me laugh, actually. Uh, let me see if I can actually look at my speedo this time. So, <laughs> it makes this bike so mad. Okay, so, I hope that... uh. I imagine that thing's lighting up, just blinking real angry down there. Um, but that's the traction control. It's preventing my wheel from getting more power while I'm doing that because it it's, knows it would spin it out with what I'm doing. Um, and if I didn't just switch insurance companies and literally on Friday, I'd go and try and break the traction on the rear with traction control level one, just to, well, let's see what happens. Let's see if I can do it on this road easy enough. it at one and see if you can get an idea of a reactive uh, traction control system so yeah I'm not gonna be able to break it at these speeds um, at least safe enough that I trust myself uh, anyway traction control ABS are they worth it for your next bike purchase absolutely 100 percent it's 500 to a thousand bucks more if you're looking at older bikes it's worth the 2000 to 3000 premium more and this is something i am a firm staunch believer in these systems are so good so insanely good at preventing you from messing up and it only takes once this is the big thing it only takes once for one of these systems to save you save your bike save the hospital bills save you from missing work it only takes once for that $500 that you thought you saved by not getting the ABS CPR um, for not getting the ABS the $800 you missed out by not getting the ABS uh, Ninja all of that kapoof gone because you decided that you were gonna save $800 right there and with ABS you get an insurance discount as well I've never actually gone to see what the difference is it's probably 10% like most things but there's a little chunk of money you're saving right there even if you do have a good career okay it's worth it I promise they're worth it don't let anyone tell you that you suck because you are actively looking for a bike with ABS because you are actively looking for a bike with traction control these are systems that are used designed made for the road they are made to make road riding safer for things with unforeseen circumstances safer just because your friend who is, you know, he rides track says he doesn't use them and that you suck if you do use them and you should be ashamed and embarrassed if you do use them. Uh, great. Cool. Don't listen to them. All right. The best, the best track riders I know all keep and actually crank up the nanny systems on their bike. 
going crank up the nanny systems on their bike uh, on the streets because they get their aggressive and very technical riding out their tire sliding all of that on the track they do not want that to happen on the street because the street has a lot bigger consequences when you mess up and they're aware of that something to think about uh, so traction control what does it do it prevents you from breaking traction on your rear especially your rear the nicer the system the more it's going to work in tangent with those things however there's nothing it can do about the front tire because your front tire is there to roll and work you have a brake basically so it's going to prevent you from breaking traction on that rear whether it be from a bad input and almost always what it's going to be preventing is you hitting a bad input from throttle the other thing it will prevent is if let's say you are uh you hit a patch of gravel instead of you what happens when you hit a patch of gravel uh and anyone who's hit a patch of gravel and new can attest to this is you are going to instinctively grab onto the bars and when you grab onto the bars you typically add throttle it's just what you do and when you add throttle when you've broken traction that was a clean stop right there uh when you add throttle you increase the spin of the wheel and you go over that patch of gravel when you catch if you catch you're high siding over or if you don't catch you are uh low siding the bike and it's because that wheel wasn't able to regain traction because it was spinning too fast to gain traction the traction control will cut that power to the wheel and allow the bike to give it a chance to stabilize and it's just they're so good the systems especially now on bikes even the most rudimentary ones on you know whatever bike they're still so good at preventing you from making the situation worse both of them and that's the big take home is it's one they're both systems that will prevent you from making something worse and they do they're so effective at it and i am a firm firm believer and i will i will die on this hill and you tell me i suck tell me that i'm a terrible rider all day long uh i don't care and that's something to note as well the reason why most guys that you're watching won't give you a firm answer on what they believe is because statistically abs and i'm throwing traction control in there as well abs is safer bar none you can't question it uh, so they can't just go out and say that traction control abs whatever is you know worthless and to appease the aggressively anti nanny aid people they're scared to say that you know you know they actually may be better for 99 percent of the population uh, because those guys are going to jump on them and say that they suck tell me i suck all day long i don't care that is something i am a huge 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 believer in and i do hope that these little examples will sh better show you how quickly the systems activate how uh because this is something that i think a lot of people misunderstand is just how quickly and useful they uh they are to the rider how interactive they are with the rider i guess would be the word uh so hopefully hopefully those little examples showing what it is please do not go test either of those things out on the road to see if your bike's traction control works or not please 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 do not um don't go test your abs in steering ability at the same time as well examples only that is not safe please don't um when shopping I, one time again it takes one time it takes that traction control preventing you from high siding one time it takes that abs preventing you from looping one time for that 500 to a thousand dollars that you act you paid additionals on whatever bike you're looking at to have saved it all back and then some plus interest times 10. just really huge 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 advocate for it i cannot recommend them enough please keep this in mind and at least consider what I'm saying if you are around a bunch of staunch anti nanny aid people who are really trying to steer you away from. Uh, any questions, anything else you'd like me to cover in the future, please ask. I do hope this helps you. I hope that the examples really do kind of give it a little more real life breath. Uh, I hope this helps. So thank you.